Hey guys, today we're gonna walk around Seattle. Probably gonna hit up. Um, so I just don't laugh. I, I forgot that. That's <laughs> like hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Oh, wait, I don't even say that. Hey guys, today we're gonna go on a little walk tour of Seattle and we're gonna go in downtown. So I'll see you there. Would you stay till the morning light? Or would you follow me? Or would you let it be? If I leave tonight, we could do this right. We'll find the remedy. Or would you stay with me now till the morning light? Before you turn away, I just want you to know that I didn't throw your stuff away. Before you make up your mind that I'm nowhere to find I'm standing right here I know that I told you we're over I swear that I'm sober Just listen, I miss you And I know that I said all these things But now when you're with her I can see that That you miss Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So a lot of you have been asking me in my YouTube videos and TikTok videos about what side projects to do that would look amazing for your resume. And so I wanted to talk about the five best programming projects or side projects that will look amazing on your resume for beginners. Okay, so to start off, here's the reason why side projects are so important for your resume. So one, as you might already know, side projects look amazing for you to have on your resume. So a lot of companies, a lot of tech companies look for side projects when it comes to hiring employees. So if you're thinking about trying to find a job or switching to a new job in software engineering, having side projects will look really favorable. Also for many different other tech roles that are non-coding, especially with program management or product management, it would look really favorable to have any sort of side projects because it shows that you have technical experience. Now this is one of the most amazing things about software engineering is because you don't have to have a degree or a coding bootcamp or any sort of specific computer science education in order to get a computer science job because you can buffer it with side projects. And now a lot of employees look way more favorably towards side projects nowadays because they can really show that you're able to um, work very hard into making something from scratch and you're able to learn the languages along the way in order to, for that product to be made. So two, another reason why side projects are so amazing to create is because they not only allow you to uh, learn the language or technology that you're learning even better, allow you to apply it more practically into real life. They also allow you to fix problems um, for issues that are in modern society. They allow you to create things to make it easier for other people. And they're ways for you to basically generate income online. If you create a side project that helps solve a problem or helps solve a necessity for other people, then you can even get money for it. And it's happened millions of times. So a lot of people create websites for other people, especially on Fiverr or other websites in which you can basically get compensated for creating side projects. But besides that, if you're a beginner, side projects really help you because when you're learning a language starting off in computer science, it might be really daunting because there's just so many different um, things and syntax and like words and a bunch of different things you have to remember when learning a language. But when you apply that language using a side project, you're really able to see what you're actually able to make with the language and it allows you to become more motivated and even stay motivated when getting through the beginning steps of computer science when you're just learning the language. Also, it's a really great way to basically work on projects with friends. So I know a lot of computer science people go into computer science because it's super cool to make things. But when they start computer science, it's really hard and it's really motivating to just learn syntaxes for um, languages and technologies. But once you apply it to side projects, it gets a lot better. And you can really see why computer science can be fun for everyone. Okay, so that being said, let's talk about these five beginner five beginner projects 
for beginner programmers. Okay, the first thing that you can do, it's basically to create a website. Now you might be thinking, what do I need to create a website? Well, the specific languages that you can possibly learn to create a website, or basically the beginner languages that you can learn to create a website are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are super important, especially JavaScript, in creating a website. Now, when you think about ideas for what website to create, I wanted to basically have this first side project as the idea. And so the idea is to recreate a website. Now, what website can you recreate? So there's something called Trello. And what Trello is, is essentially a to-do task website where you basically get to create a task and assign tasks to other people and also write descriptions for tasks you're able to do in the future. And it's basically like a workplace kind of thing where you're able to delegate and receive tasks. And I think that's such an easy way to create a first website for something that other people can use too. So basically, you can use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to design your website and create specific tasks in which you can basically put descriptions for tasks, titles for tasks, people assigned to the tasks, move around tasks. You can take a look at Trello in order to recreate the website. Trello is a lot harder for you to recreate as a beginner, but you can definitely recreate a bunch of the functionalities that Trello has. So the second idea is to make a game in JavaScript. Now, when I started off learning how to do web development, I basically was taught that you should probably make a very simple game in JavaScript. And what game do I suggest you guys to make is basically this game called Brick Breaker. Now, if you've never heard Brick Breaker, it's basically like this. And essentially what happens is that you create your own like um, player tile and you try to shoot down the tiles up above. So now this is basically, you can make the whole thing in JavaScript, you can make it in other languages as well, but I would suggest doing it in JavaScript to basically put it online and see how it looks. But you can recreate this and you can add specific elements in there as well to make it customized as your own. So you don't have to use bricks to basically be hit down by the ball. You can change the ball to another image, change the bricks to another image. You can speed up the ball every single time the ball hits the paddle. You can do so many different things and you can basically make up your own game. But this very simple game allows you to delve into the world of game customization and all of the games that you can make with specific languages like JavaScript, Python, and eventually you'll get to work with stuff like you the third project that you can make is a random number generator in Python. Now this seems like a pretty simple project to make, a random number generator, and you, if you actually look at Google, you can actually do a random number generator. So essentially I want you to make this, except I want you to make it on your own. There's a really simple method in Python to do random number generalization, but I want you to be able to customize it so that you have specific boundaries, you have specific ranges. So if I ask you, generate a number or a generate an even number between 20 and 1,134, you'll be able to do it. And it'll be really cool because it shows you the different things that you can make with Python. And I know that one of my friends actually became famous because he made a random name generator. So basically he was able to generate names for kids and a lot of people started using it. I don't know why. And I guess a lot of people think it's super cool to see random baby names. So I think starting off with a random number generator would be super cool for a beginner. Mm -hmm. So the fourth thing that I think would be super cool for a beginner to make would be an online shopping platform. So there's a bunch of online shopping platforms, but if you guys haven't heard about it yet, dropshipping has started to become really big in which people basically buy items at a cheap price and then resell them on Amazon or resell them on other platforms for even cheaper prices so they get the difference. And basically in order to make dropshipping work, you have to be able to make a website that looks really appealing to other people so that they buy your item. So one of the things that you can do is actually you can use JavaScript, HTML, CSS, maybe HTML5, maybe Bootstrap in order to basically create a website or an online store for items for other people. So essentially what happens is that you can actually create an online store with specific items, a list of items, and you can have your own profile, you can have your shopping cart. So basically this is the um, beginner method for creating this shopping platform. And in order to get more advanced, you can basically have them um, connect to a Stripe account, have them really check out. And basically you can actually like sell this to someone when they're doing drop shipping because if you make your website really cool enough they might want to use it for their own products and then you'll be able to get money because other people are using your website template in order to basically 
um, sell their own products. Finally, you can make a content aggregator in Python. And now a content aggregator essentially means that you get content from a bunch of different sources and put them together on one site. Now, one reason why this is super cool is because a lot of places have a lot of content and everyone has to go through Google to look for all of this content, but it would be really cool to have them all on one site. Just like if you wanted information about the elections or if you wanted information about an international matter, you can basically get them all on this one site. And you can do that really simply using Web Scraper. So I know Beautiful Soup is a pretty common API to use in Python, but you can use a Python Web Scraper in order to scrape a bunch of uh, web documents or information articles, get the HTML information, and basically put them on a single website in which you can display all the information about that one topic from many different media sources. And I think this would be not only really helpful to other people because they would want to see this, it would be really cool for you to you learn how to use other technologies that Python has in order to do web scraping because learning how to web scrape can allow you to do so many different things and allow you to do web scraping for like maybe other data that you can't really aggregate or download from the website and doing it just with this content aggregator can really prepare you for future uh, projects as well. All right, so that's all the projects that we have today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys are able to go back and start making one of those projects or think about what projects that you want to make. So basically the takeaway is that, you know, there's so many projects to make and they're definitely within your grasp. Even as a beginner programmer, you can make those projects. Make sure to subscribe and like for more videos and comment down below what your first side project was or what side project did you think was the coolest that you ever made and we'll be able to have a discussion about it. Thanks so much for watching again and have an amazing day.